Algorithms DJ Pro 5 for Mac and iPad, iPhone, has got three really big new features that I'm gonna show you right now. It's a slick DJ platform. It looks as cool as ever. Works on Mac OS, iOS, and iPad OS in the version we're reviewing now. But it has fallen behind as far as we're concerned in a few areas recently. So they include the beat gridding. It's never been that good. The stems, they were the first to the table with stems, but their stems sound a lot worse than the competition nowadays, or at least some of the competition. So we want to look at whether they've improved those things. And also they've got something new on the crossfader, which is typical algorithm. It's a bit gimmicky. You might like it. You might not like it, but I'm going to show you that as well. I want to start off though, funnily, not with the stems. I'm going to give you a full demo with vocals and drums and everything of the stems very shortly. But I want to start off with the beat gridding because what they've done to beat gridding is incredible. And it's easier for me just to show you. I've loaded probably one of the tracks that no other software could ever hope to beat grid properly. It's from years ago, from 94, I think. It's called Bells of New York by Slow Motion. And anyone who remembers that track will know that that track has got a very fast house section that sounds like this. And it's got a hip hop tempo section that sounds like this. And in the middle, it's got the section that I'm waving my mouse pointer around now where it literally slows down from house to hip hop in the song. So let's get the beat grids uh, nice and big so you can see what's happening on the waveform here. And this has been analyzed automatically. I've not done a single thing to the beat grid here in this track. This is absolutely automatic analyzing. Look at the top track on here then. And I'm gonna play, watch the grids. So these are the grid lines here. Watch the grids. So I'm actually gonna go back a tiny bit further so you can see the grid lines on the house section and then watch as it slows down through this section where the BPM changes drastically in the track itself and then kicks in again with the hip hop section and watch how the beat grids are completely on the line. Okay, we're in the breakdown now and it's obviously completely on grid. But any second now it's gonna start slowing down. See the BPM slowing down here? See the grid? That's now slowed down to 105 BPM and the grid stayed with it literally every millisecond of the way. That is incredible. You cannot do that on any DJ software. You could do it on Ableton Live with a lot of work, I would imagine. This has done it automatically. It picks up pretty much everything in any track you throw at it. So it deals with disco and funk and rock. No need for you to worry about the beat grids anymore. And of course, beat grids are great because they help you with loops and cues and quantize and sync and all those things, effects like echo and so on that rely on it knowing where the beats are. It's incredible. How does it cope then if you've got two tracks together and one of them's got a big tempo change and the other hasn't? Well, whichever is the master deck is the one that the overall tempo of your DJing will follow. So if you don't want that big tempo change to show in your DJing, you just make sure that a track which hasn't got a tempo change is the master. It did get it slightly wrong in a few places. One of the things that we noticed a few times is that it got the first beat of the bar two beats out. So it thought the first beat was in the middle of the bar. But nonetheless, the actual beat lines were always, always bang on. Uh, incredible. Easy enough to go in there and change those things, by the way. There's a little set of beat grinning controls here, which I'm hiding and showing, where you can just set the downbeat to where it should be. Do the usual half or double if it's got that wrong. Uh, and other bits and pieces down there. The beat gridding absolutely blew us away. Absolutely blew us away. It's a game changer. And so that's the first big, big feature, even though maybe not the big headline grabbing feature. The headline grabbing feature for most DJs, I think is probably going to be how good its instant acapellas and instrumentals are. In other words, it's stems. So let's get a couple of tracks loaded up now and have a look at stems. So I've got a loop running here on a vocal house track. And the thing with stems is that DJ was first to the market with these things, but theirs started to sound pretty ropey. So they've partnered with another company called Audio Shake, who are very good at this stuff. And this is how they sound. Let's just go through all the stems down here, drums, bass, music, and vocals. And we'll start off with the vocals, and then I'll do a few other combinations so you can hear them. I'm 
it's all about. One day I have to do you all my love. So it's got that kind of pumpy feel you get with auto stems, but it's very, very good. I'd say up there with, if not better than the best currently in DJ software. Very impressed with those. One day I have to do you all my love. Don't think I cared about your answer, no. I understood that I am soon about. Okay, let's now just listen to the drums, literally just the drums, because what often happens with drums is that you don't get the uh, you don't get the cleanness when it's just the drums you're listening to. You get other stuff coming in or they sound a bit muddy. See how well it does with that. So for me, they're sounding really good. Maybe a little bit of bass creeping in. Let's put the bass with the drums and have a listen to that. This is going to sound no good if you're on your phone, by the way, but as long as you've got good speakers or headphones, let's go with just the bass. Again, you be the judge, but I think that sounds excellent. Let's just add in the music to the bass then. So the, the wind instrument there, the saxophone sounded nice. The little bit of bleed coming in from the vocals is noticeable, but I think that's also pretty good. Let's add the vocals back in then and leave the drums off. What do you think? Let us know in the comments. I'd say that they're right up there now at the top with the best virtual DJ, Serato, do a very good job. And I'd say this is doing a good job as well. But another thing I can't really show you here is that how fast they are. You can load a track and you can use the stems instantly. There's no, there's no need to have a separate folder that you've prepared them in and you can jump around in the track and the stems are just there. That's another thing that is interesting about this, how quick it is. Now I'm testing it on a Mac, but it's just as fast on iOS. Not surprising that because nowadays phones and iPads have got equally good processors in them, right? Really impressed with the new stems. Okay, let's now use the other track I've loaded because I want to move on to the crossfader effects. So the crossfader effects are something which is it's kind of typical algorithm this. They do like their gimmicks, but these are quite good. Our, our tutor DJ Angelo was involved. DJ Angelo works with algorithm closely on some of this stuff um, and he's given them advice and a lot of input on this. Indeed, there's a video where he shows a lot of this stuff that I thoroughly recommend you go and look at if you want to dive deeper into it, which is somewhere in this review as well or linked underneath if you're watching directly on YouTube. Uh, 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 Angelo does a really good demo of some of this stuff with different music. However, the music I've chosen here uh, to show the effects are the um, track we were just listening to and another track which is about eight BPMs lower because there's something I want to show you on the crossfader they've added to help with BPM mixing as well. Let's get stuck in then. So I've got two tracks playing and looped and synced here. I was going to move the crossfader backwards and forwards between them so that you can hear the difference. So you need to have the crossfader button showing on the screen next to the crossfader itself to bring up the crossfader effects. Here they are. And these are the ones that you get. So the first one is called EQ. I want you to watch the EQ as I move the crossfader across uh, here and here. So what it's doing there is using the EQ to try and keep the sound nice and balanced as you bring the fader across. Let's have a look at the filter effect. So 
So what it was doing there, I showed you with the mouse pointer here and here, was using the filters to make that blend smoother. The dissolve effect sounds like this. So that used some effects, but also some EQ as well. The next one is tremolo. I like this one because it's a bit more like the echo that we're used to as DJs. Next up is another variation, the lunar echo. Which adds a bit of a noise effect in there. Next up, we have Sweep. Bit of a high pass kind of filter effect going on there. Riser, I think EDM fans will guess what this one sounds like. Okay, so we now move on to the neural effects, which are a little bit more interesting. You know, the ones we've seen so far, I think the ones that work best are the ones that have got that kind of echo going on that we're used to, right? The idea here is that it saves you having to use all the EQ and use the filters and do all that stuff yourself. We just put it all on one fader. It's up to you whether you think that's good or not. You know, it's there, but these ones are doing a little bit more. So let's have a little closer look at them. This one's called Vocal Sustain. So it's easier to get the hang of what this is doing if I just stop the other track while we're doing it uh, and the sync will pull it back again when I start it. So let's go back to where we were there and stop the other track. You see, it's maintaining a bit of the beat and putting lots of echo on that vocal and keeping that vocal hanging in there. Let's grab another one, vocal cut. So I've moved the crossroad a little bit across to the middle and I'm now gonna stop the other track. You can hear the vocals disappear entirely when I get to the middle. So if the other track's a vocal track, this area of mixing in isn't gonna clash because the vocal's gone. This can be useful if you're using a vocal intro on the other track. And then we've got harmonic sustain. We'll listen to that one. These are all variations of either cutting things early or leaving things in a little bit later as you're transitioning between the tracks. And I certainly recommend that you listen to them on their own uh, without something else being mixed into to kind of figure out where it's happening. Uh, so this one is the drum swap. Instead of harmonies or vocals, this is um, playing about with the drums as you mix the crossfader over. Again, let's just stop the other day. All the drums have gone by the time we reach the middle, which means the drums on the incoming track are going to come in uh, a lot more dominant. And then the music comes in later. All right, so as I said, these are going to be something that you either just don't want to touch with the barge pole or you see some uses. Uh, and as I also said, Angelo's done a great video about this, which we've linked to if you want to watch Angelo demonstrating some of this, because especially some of the acapellas there where you can just cut to the acapella and then scratch the acapella in and then throw the whole track in without needing to do anything else. There's performance stuff here that you can do on this that you couldn't do any other way. So go take a look at that if you're interested in seeing these further. However, the big thing here for me 
And I actually, the more I think about this, the more I think it's pretty cool. I've actually seen it before. It's on the, the, the DDJ Flex 4 with its, I think it's called Smart Crossfader. There's a button on that, on that record box controller. Anyway, they've got a similar thing going on here. So crossfader's over on the left. And I'm gonna go into the settings here and this is tempo blend switched on. Now, what this means is that when I mix between the two tracks, as I was doing there, you'll see that the tempo changes from the tempo of one, which is 120, to the tempo of the other. So you always end up at the true tempo of the track you're mixing into when the crossfader has finished going across. And this works in conjunction with the other things that you've got selected here as well. So this can be a nice way to play open format sets where you don't really care about people hearing your big BPM changes and you don't want to have to do it manually. Or if you're playing a house set, for instance, and everything's around 120, 125, and you don't really care about using, um, using sync and moving your tempo faders on your controller to keep everything in time, uh, and you just want it to be kept in time as you move the cross fader across, very easy way of doing it. In either circumstance, I think that's really useful. And I can actually see myself using that quite a lot. Um, and in com combination with the Neural Mix uh, powered crossfader effects, I think there's a lot there for open format DJs especially. Right, what do we think of it then? Well, the stems are very, very good. I think the uh, beat gridding is absolutely revolutionary. Expect to see that coming to other platforms near you very soon because I can't see other people not picking up on that one right away. You know, if this has been a big DJ platform, if this has been Serato or Recordbox for in introducing it, the others would be very annoyed or worried or immediately trying to, even though they're owned by the same people now, right? Uh, but, you know, the, the point is this is a small platform and I don't think DJ Pro has got enough new here to convert like hordes and hordes of people to it. But that's not the point. They're innovating and other people pick up on and copy this stuff, which means they're doing something right. If they did want to do that, if they did want to be a big player, they'd need, they'd need more universal or more solid hardware partnerships and integrations and licensing like Serato's got, that kind of thing. And I think they'd also need to have real true cross-platform. Like in, in, in the second it drops on one platform, you get the same features on all the others, which they, they've never done. Also, I don't think that their cloud stuff is anywhere near as good. Like if you've got it on different platforms, on Recordbox, for instance, you can easily have the same library running on everything pretty flawlessly nowadays. They haven't quite got there yet on this, and I'd like to see that because I, th I find I've always found that clunky in DJ Pro. However, some big leaps forward if you're an iOS, a Mac OS, or a um, iPad OS user here. Uh, and this software is not that expensive. It's a subscription, but it's only seven pounds, euros, dollars a month, or fifty a year. So you're not paying an awful lot for this. Even if you don't switch your DJ software from whatever you use now, which probably isn't that as your main platform, definitely worth considering trying it as a fun second platform uh, because it's always been strong in that area as people's kind of favorite second DJ software. And even if you only use, which I haven't shown you here, but they've got a really nice little portrait mode on the new phone app, which gives you a really easy way of just very, very casually DJing, like really useful from streaming services. Even if you only use that, you might just get addicted to it. It's quite addictive. Uh, so we liked it, DJ Pro 5 from Algorithm. It's out now and the full written review is on Digital DJ Tips if you're not already there watching it. Uh, if you're on YouTube, click underneath. I'll see you again for another one very soon. Meanwhile, from the Digital DJ Tips studio, get good, get out there, make the moments. Till next time, bye-bye.